Reg, Halloween plans? Kids time. Yeah. Uh, as we all know, Halloween is all about the little kids, so we'll be trick-or-treating. And if you're going to ask, will I be dressing up? Absolutely <laughs> no. No. No, no, no. I will have a mask on probably, just a little scary mask to kind of be festive a little bit. But the full-on, come on. Once you turn 15. Yeah. Can't dress up anymore, right? Well, 15 is, is the cutoff. Have you gone to a Halloween party? When's the last time you went to a Halloween party and dressed up? Oh, probably when I played. We had a team Halloween party um, every year. So that's probably the last time I've gone to a party where everyone was dressed up. And who'd you dress up as? <laughs> every year, I was the greatest entertainer of all time. <laughs> and should I break them out right now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you've been hit by you've been hit by a smooth criminal <laughs> every year i was michael jackson you didn't want to go so as I went, you went, didn't mix it up and go as prince no, no no i went like i was one year i was five-year-old abc i want you back michael and then i was uh the destiny uh jackson tour michael and then obviously i was off the wall michael and then another year, I was Thriller, Michael. And then I became Bad, Michael. <laughs> and then remember the time. Do you remember the time? <laughs> so, yes, you could be a whole bunch of Michael Jacksons. Uh, Reggie's got the call. It'll be the Lakers and the Blazers. That'll be a doubleheader on uh, TNT. All right, a few things to talk about here. When do we get concerned about the Cavaliers here? Uh, after the new year. But I am not concerned whatsoever, just like I'm not concerned with teams getting off to great starts here in October. Um, everyone's, it's a filling out process. There's only one team with that cohesion, um, and that's the Golden State Warriors, the defending champs. Everyone else is trying to figure it out and trying to get to know one another. There's a lot of new moving parts with Coach Lou and the Cleveland Cavaliers. And if this continues after January 1st and into the All-Star break, that's when you need to be concerned. Their defense is terrible, Reg. I don't know, even if it everybody's is. healthy, if that defense is going to be any good. Yes, but one thing that is correctable and quickly can be your defense. When you've got LeBron James and J.R. Smith is playing god-awful right now at both ends of the floor. Yeah. But they have the pieces to become a better defensive team. And let's not forget... Their second best player is probably out until mid January, maybe February, uh, in Isaiah Thomas. So they don't have their full roster yet. So that's why I'm not concerned. As long as LeBron stays healthy and engaged, that's the big word. He has to stay engaged and can't be frustrated with this new process with all these two players. If he's still engaged and healthy, it's the East, too. Let's not forget it's the East, it's not the West. Speaking of the process, what do you think of the uh, 76ers so far? Love them. Um, they're going to take their lumps, their ups and downs. You saw the game winner that Houston hit against them at home. They're going to win some and lose some, but I like the young talent that they're developing there. I think uh, once MB could be cleared to play every game and not every other game, and uh, Ben Simmons, again, we talked about this last week, he'll win Rookie of the Year, even though he's not really technically, in my opinion, a rookie because he's been in the system now. This will be his second year. Ben Simmons is what we thought he would be. He is a very poor man's version of LeBron James, being able to do everything, um, being that point forward. And he played well last night. And, and, you know, these teams are going to do what I said you should do, is make him shoot a jumper. He made the jumpers last night, but that's probably going to be the way, you know, teams approach him and probably Lonzo Ball. You got Lakers at the Blazer, uh, Blazers coming up. What do you expect in that matchup? Well, obviously, you know, the highlight's going to be Lonzo going against Damian Lillard and or C.J. McCollum. Um, Portland has got off to a rough start as well. Um, last night at home versus Toronto, uh, it was a 20-point thrashing by the Raptors over the Blazers. Um, and this is a team that on paper has talent. You know, we mentioned the two cards, but uh, Yusef Nurkic, the, guy, yeah. uh, the big guy in the middle, to me is one of the unsung big men in this game. And when healthy, he can play with his back to the basket, he can face you up, and is a terrific passer. So Terry Stotts has the talent to be a playoff team, maybe an eighth seed in the Western Conference. Um, but again, it's one of those teams trying to find themselves early on in the season. 
And I, I like the comments coming out of Lonzo Ball. Um, don't try to praise us and kill me now and then try to praise me later on when we, we figured it out. <laughs> you know? So, look, we knew this was going to happen with the Lakers, a young team with a lot of young talent uh, and a young coach still uh, in Coach Walton. So they're going to take their lumps. So it's, it's one of those games where it's a lot of young star talent on the floor, but it's a, it's a pick em game, really. I mean, this is a game that the Lakers can win on the road. What about uh, what you've seen with the Knicks? It, it seems like Kristaps Porzingis is enjoying Carmelo Anthony being in Oklahoma City. Why are you trying to start controversy? <laughs> I mean, does that need to be said because Melo's gone now? Porzingis okay, is going uh, out. All right, okay, Reg. If, sh- if I said this, hey, it seems like Kristaps Porzingis certainly is enjoying himself with the Knicks. Should I have stopped there and then you I wouldn't would, have, you wouldn't have would, brought in Carmelo? Yes, and then I would say... Well, I, then I would say yes, because the offense is being ran directly through him. He's the go-to guy. We wouldn't even have to mention Melo. But, yes, there's more <laughs> spacing out there. And Tim Hardaway Jr., I thought, was a great pickup for them, um, a good addition to play alongside Porzingis. So, yes, they have seemed to have figured it out. That was a big win on the road in Cleveland, though we mentioned the, the struggles of the Cavaliers. But, uh, yeah, maybe he's starting to figure this out a little bit. But it's only going to get tougher for Porzingis because when you are the man and the go-to man and teams start to double and triple team, they haven't even started to triple team them yet because they don't respect the Knicks that way, but they will once they get more talent. I want to see what happens when they start to double and triple team him. Yeah, I think he's averaging less than one assist per game. So I I think it's .8. (laughs) <laughs> that's far mellow dominated him in that category reg <laughs> look uh, look Porzingis is a great talent a freakish athlete can run the floor can finish in traffic can block shots but one thing he needs to improve on is finding his teammates and that will come in time because right now he's had single coverage throughout his nba career but reg he's got to find teammates first then to find those teammates got to make shots too you always put it on the players (laughs) teammates got to make shots too other than hardaway who's going to make shots on that team i agree so once he finds some teammates then he can find his teammates right hey i could throw you the basketball if you miss it why is that on me well, that's why I didn't want to pass because I realized that I could throw it to you, but I like the, I like the option of me. Sh- did you ever feel that way? How many times did you do that where you thought I could throw it to Mark Jackson or you know Rick Smith, but I I'm a better shooter than they? No, are. no, no. Those guys I would definitely throw to. There was some other guys that they have played with that had buttery fingers. I'd be like, uh. The best option is for this ball, this round little ball, <laughs> this round little orange ball to stay in my hands. You wouldn't have thrown so, it yes, to the Davis. Have, you wouldn't have thrown it to the Davis. Uh, no, team. no. You, definitely, <laughs> definitely, threw, definitely threw it to them. I definitely would have thrown it to Haywood Workman, to Derek McKee. But there's no guys. I'm not gonna, Jermaine O'Neal I would have thrown it to. <laughs> Give me a name who won't <laughs> be mad. You purposely did not throw it to him. <laughs> No, I love all of <laughs> no. them. Dan. Why are you trying to start controversy? And that doesn't mean you don't love Indiana them. People? You just didn't love their shot. That's There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, if I played pickup with the Danettes, I'm not throwing the ball to Fritzy or Pauly. Smart move. And I love them. Are you serious? No, I'm not throwing it to them. They're terrible. They're terrible. But McLovin and Seton would get the ball. So now it's your turn. I respect I respect all my Indiana teammates throughout the years. But if there was a player I I would not throw the basketball to, I would throw it to all of them. Oh, you are lame. I would make the right play. I would make the right play. That's lame. I would make the right play. Are you rooting against the Dodgers tonight? I'm not rooting against them, but can I just say I cannot remember a World Series that's been this riveting because we finally have offense. Usually it's a two to one, one to zero, three to two game. I mean, you don't know what's going to happen crazy. from inning to inning. So I'm not rooting against them, but go Angels. That's all I'm going to say. Go Angels. Haywood Workman, you wouldn't throw it to, right? <laughs> um, what's the situation? Is the game on the line? 
Yeah, game on the line. Like if I'm coming off, if I'm coming off a down, you're double screen, teamed. You're double teamed. And his man comes off. Of he's him wide and open. Comes to he's me. he's wide open at the top of the key. Woody, I love you. <laughs> I think you're a great NBA referee. I really do. You're not but throwing. I've got to take this shot, Haywood. <laughs> I've got to take this shot with these two players on top. <laughs> How about Poo, Poo Richardson? Well, Pooh's our relationship goes back to UCLA, so I'm definitely throwing the ball to Pooh. Yeah, but he couldn't, he couldn't shoot. He couldn't, but he's the one who got me the basketball. <laughs> so you gotta, you've got to throw it to the point guard every five times to make him think that you're thinking of him. Did did anybody? Uh, didn't Luke Walton bring up your shot in as a reference to Lonzo Ball? He did, did because everyone is concerned about Lonzo's ball sh- shot and how. <laughs> Un- unorthodox it is. And he was like, well, look at Reggie. You know, no one is telling him to change his shot. And he's one of the greatest shooters of all time. Thank you, Luke. I did appreciate the nods up, but I wouldn't change it either. Did people shoot try to trade? How, did they try to make you change your shot? Uh, not change. They tried to tweak. You know how Tiger was going through those stages of him tweaking his swing every, what, three or four years? Yeah. They tried to tweak it. But uh, I was like, does the ball go in all the time? And they're like, yes. I was like, well, leave me alone. And that was it. <laughs> this was at UCLA. Wait, are you Larry the, Farmer and his staff. Are you the Tiger Woods of shooters? Is that what you just called yourself? I never tweaked my – and I never tweaked. Oh, you never Tiger tweaked? Tiger tweaked his, his golf oh. swing. I never tweaked. Now, I would emulate certain shots coming off screens like some of the guys I followed. Like, I, coming off to my left, I emulated Larry Bird's high-arching fadeaway three. So I tried to shoot it like him. Coming off to my right, I tried to emulate Dale Ellis, Ooh. who shot the ball right in front of his forehead because that's a quicker shot coming off to your right. So I shot it different ways from – different shooters that I admired and how quickly they got the basketball off. But I never tweaked personally my own shot. He's a Reggie Miller, Hall of Famer, NBA uh, on a TNT analyst. He's got Blazers, Lakers, 1030 Eastern on TNT. Uh, first game of a doubleheader tip off at 8 Eastern between the Warriors and the Spurs. Reg, as always, safe travels. Great to talk to you, and we'll talk to you next week. Theodore, you were the best. Dad, who has to wear the Lululemons? Uh, McLovin oh, man, does. I can't wait. McLovin. Win, 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 so I can uh, DVR that <laughs> show. Win. <laughs> McLovin, you can get Lululemon here in the city. I guess we'll have to look at Reggie's schedule to see when he's available. You could probably wear this tomorrow. But it's not like, Reggie, you've worn <laughs> yoga pants, haven't you, in California? I thought that was a thing. Oh, wow. here we go. Wow. And you know what? Wow. Yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we'll leave that to the imagination. Thanks, Reg. <laughs> Thanks, guys. That's Reggie Miller. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.